Hello, I'm the Disc Golf Guy, and this is my video game blog. None of that's true, um, but I'm Tyler Brickley, and I'm taking you through the first ever Disc Golf Valley Invitational. We've got a few uh, mates playing a friendly. Uh, let's meet them right now. So first up, we've got Mike Smith with a 1,000 Pro Tour rating. He's got a nickname. Uh, it's too fast. Um, Drain09 with a Pro Tour rating of 1,009. So just a little bit better than Mike Smith. And then David Sally, or Sally or something, has an 1,100 um, Pro Tour rating, which is pretty stunning. Here we're starting off on hole one, which is a puff. <laughs> and you can hear the birds are still singing, even though it's pouring down rain. So you've got to appreciate their dedication. This is a pretty gettable par four. Let's see if anybody can throw it in for the eagle, but I expect everyone's going to at least birdie this one. Now David's got a three mile an hour tailwind. That's gliding nicely. If he gets a big skip, which he does. Oh, wow. <laughs> what? The? 518 feet. Just parked it. All right, here goes Drano. It sounds like we don't have any audio for Drano. I can help out. Click, bump, skip, roll. Rain, rain, pitter, patter. Now you, Dizzle, is playing it. It's a it's a, a flex start tournament, so you don't have to all tee off at the same time. You can see the rain had cleared away. We'll see if the different weather conditions uh, prove to be an advantage for some and a disadvantage for another. You are Dizzle, or maybe Er Dizzle, or Your Dizzle. Um, Mike has tried an inversion, did not work out for him, but manages to absolutely Bang the eagle putt from 112 feet. All of these guys are going to walk off hole one with an eagle. Very impressive start. Star eagles from the card is something that you don't see every day. Yeah, so there you can see David Drano and URD Izzel all at two under par. And this one is also a very gettable par four if you can play it right. A lot of AMs are going to lay up short right of this stream and then pitch over to get the uh easy birdie but I would imagine depending on the wind that every single one of these guys is going to go right for the basket David's got a two mile an hour right to left it is up on a great looking line it's going to fade out there catch a little bit of shrubs fought through all right I anticipate he's going to make that part no problem Drano's actually got a one mile an hour tailwind which could end up being a problem, yeah, I don't think it's going to be a problem. I was going to say it actually could mean he flies too far, which sounds crazy on a 553 feet hole. But you got to keep in mind these guys also have about 20 or 30 feet of elevation drop. So that's going to help the distance quite a bit. And URD Izzel is actually one of the closest. Nobody's absolutely parked it, but these guys are all pretty good. I'd say in Disc Golf Valley, a 60-foot putt is about like a 20-foot putt in real life. So, and that's that's for me. For these guys, it might be just a tap in. Looks like everybody will see if David can clean up another star. Yeah, wow. You got two star eagle frames to start out. So everybody's four under after just two holes, which is insane. Now, this is another par four and. I'll be interested to see if these guys can reach this one. We'll see the uh, the distance graphic in just a second, but I, if I had to guess, I'd say it's probably the longest of the three holes so far. It's another par four. Let's see. David's going to start us off. Okay, yeah, so it's 570. I mean, this one's pushing 600 feet, and David's got a two-mile-an-hour headwind, so he is going to do an inversion. So this is kind of a glitch in the game that, uh, you know, a few people have figured out how to use to their advantage. Essentially, it flips the world upside down, which inverts the wind direction. So he's taken what was kind of a two-mile-an-hour headwind in his face right to left and turned it into a two-mile-an-hour tailwind left to right. Pretty good distance on that. He's going to be about 120 feet out. Uh, Drano, you know, as we know, is playing later in the day, so he's got a three-mile-an-hour tailwind. He's definitely got the distance on that one, but he's leaked it out a bit to the left. He'll have about a 70-foot tailwind putt. 
And we've got URD Ezel. He's also going for the inversion because he did not have a tailwind. And this is just absolutely trip. It's very strange to watch these guys throw inversions in real life. You know, we're just seeing the disc, but if you're standing there in the gallery to watch them actually climb under the tee pad like that, it's uh, it's unsettling. Yeah, so Drano's got about 100 feet. I called it 120, so he's a little closer than I thought. He does manage to squeak it in over the top of the basket. I'm sensing a theme here of uh, another star eagle. We got 100, but David is absolutely shanked that one by about two or three kilometers to the left. And he'll have a clean up for birdie. David does get his eagle. Oh, sorry, that was David's clean up for birdie. My mistake. URD as all is definitely cleaning this one up for his eagle. So if I'm not mistaken, and I haven't been for several seconds now, it should be six, six, and five. It's Drano, URD as all, and I've both six under, and David is five under. Now this one is an absolute gimme. Birdie, this is a short par three downhill with all kinds of backstops. So I'll bet you all of these guys are hoping to ace this one. Essentially, if you don't ace this hole, then you're going to tie everybody else. I mean, nobody's going to par this one. Drano's put it up, but that is not going to fade back. He's just going to slide up for an easy tap in. Uh, Dizzle is he's steering it down. Uh, this is on a good line, but it's not going to stay up. Another absolute tap in. Let's see if David can uh, give us some fireworks. He's got a three mile an hour left to right. He's got it on a hyzer angle. Yeah, same thing. None of these guys wanted it. None of them had the power to keep it in the air long enough to actually give it a run. So we're going to see a few boring tap ins for Birdie right here. Just a formality for those guys. So we're going to move into hole five with uh, seven, seven, and six down. It's definitely staying close. Um, this is another one that I can't see any of them parring, but I could see one of them, you know, giving us a nice ace run. It's not an easy hole to like absolutely park, you know, because it's on a little bit of an ant hill or whatever, but it is definitely pretty easy to make a yeah a birdie put after that so he's down the hill right but you know he's probably not going to have any trouble with that interesting to see the first two players select fairway drivers almost like wow that was <laughs> the stiff blade of grass there knocked that one back down the hill okay here we go here's a speed 10 musket as this is a musket birdie that's what he's throwing on that Hold. Nobody gave it a run for the ace. Maybe they are all just playing for birdie. Oh, man. Drano did not need to pull that one right. <laughs> you are Dizzle just up and over, so he got a birdie. Uh, David's trying to clean up a par. I think he's still out. Oh, and a terrible spit back. Right in the heart and right back out. That happens on elevated baskets more than you'd like. And Drano's like, yeah, just let me be done with this flipping hole. I did not think there was a chance any of them could par that hole, but David proved me wrong. So we're going to go into hole six with uh, eight, seven, and six down. And I mean, you wouldn't expect with players of this caliber for there to be much of a spread in just nine holes, but... You know, as I think about it, as a commentator, I think I'd rather be the guy who's ahead... Then behind, you know, with only uh, four holes left. But, it, you know, that's just me. You are Dizzle. Very easy par three. Let's see if the... I, you know, I'm very surprised by the unaggressive play on just a hundred meter, you know, like put it up there and give it a run sort of hole. It's These guys are almost like... Yeah, see, Drano's doing the same thing. It's like they're already thinking about the next hole. They're just like, yeah, write me down for a two. Let's see if David needs to make up a stroke let's see if he can give it a bid skip mm. so we're going to have the world's most boring three putts coming up if we saw a three putt that would be less boring but that's not going to happen and you can just imagine yeah you can imagine um 
chain sounds on Drano's recording here. So that means with just three holes left, it's going to be you uh, are Diesel at nine under par, Drano at eight, and David at seven. So uh, on a normal day, maybe anybody's game, but I'd say it's you are Diesel's game to lose at this point. Now, this is another short par three, but the thing to note is it can get very windy, so we might see a mishap on the putting green. It's probably only 300 and, I don't know, 30 feet or something. But the game winds can get up to about, yeah, see, 5 miles per hour. So in real life, that translates to about a 25-mile-an-hour wind. And your diesel is going with an inversion from 330 feet, which is very odd. Maybe he's just trying to keep it on the ground to keep the wind out of play. Okay, yeah, yeah all right. So it turns out he knows Bean's about playing this game. It's fine. Drano just launches it. He's like, you know what? I am going to just take the ball right by the nape of his neck and, and yell into his horn and let the whole world know that it, this tournament is mine now. Every one of them has had a five mile an hour win. David has the opposite direction. Oh, that started out right. That is going to blow left, left, left. Wow, I cannot believe how. So now needs to check that disc for Stickum. He does get up and in. We'll see if uh, Drano and Mike can do the same. Drano can. No blood on this one is what it's looking like. Nice URD. Two holes left. Scores are still the same spread. 10 down, 9 down, 8 down. And it is definitely Erdizel in the driver's seat at this point. He's saying, hey, I'm going to take this home and... There, you know, one of them's in the back seat crying, and the other was in the passenger seat. Like, hey, you look like maybe you need a rest. Maybe I should drive for a while. And Mike's like, yeah, yeah, right. I'm not going to fall for that one. Let's see if he falls for it. He's got a five mile an hour left to righty. He's going to pull out the didn't see what that was a musket. Oh no, he switched to the ballista. It is up. That is tracking right, but he's going to hit. Did get a skip off the rock. Did not hurt him. He is on the green. I sometimes wish this hole didn't have such a violently saving backstop behind the green. I think it would be a lot more interesting. Uh, Drano's pulled this one into the trees on the right. He's going to have about 60 feet left, which isn't a problem normally for these guys, but it is very windy. And last and maybe least, we're going to have to find out on the last hole. David's also put it into the hill, but this one is tracking around, and he's going to be up there with Mike. So not quite 60 feet. Drano's got 52. Big tailwind, so not a problem. If that was a headwind, it would have been a lot more interesting. And your diesel's going to straddle out of the bush. Oh, he caught some leaf there. It was almost a catastrophe for him on the second to last hole. But he and David will both eagle. So I think he's going to have a one-stroke advantage on Drano and two strokes on David going into the last hole. Oh, and it is an absolute gimme. So, yeah, I think we can just hand him the trophy right now. You know, the, the nine-hole stretch is all automated. It's randomly generated. It's not like, you know, laid out in advance. But it is kind of said, even in spite of the wind, that the last hole is such a shorty. Would have liked to have seen like a long island hole or the island hopping hole or something. Wow, you're just going to... He's put it straight... Oh, it's almost like he's using the trees as a backstop. And, uh, dr uh, wow. Here we go. Drain. This is not an 8-bit game, uh, but it looks that way. And You know what? Stop ragging on the game. You can take your two-bit opinions somewhere else. Uh, Drano's just having some connectivity issues there and provided us with a little bit of fun thing to look at we're not going to be provided with much drama here on the last hole because unless david could throw it in that would be absolutely stunning it does look like he's gunning for it but he got a tree and then a rock and he's got a very very he, he could get third at this point oh wow just buries it right in the heart from 75 feet up the hill it is all this is for the tournament Oh, oh man, catastrophe. Oh, so, okay, so Drano made that. So what happened? Oh my gosh, she is not going to miss it. 
Okay, that would have absolutely... I think he's going to tie. Let's see what happens. So he ties Drano on the last hole, and David's only one behind them. It was absolutely crazy drama right on the last hole, and we don't have any um, way to do a playoff or anything like that. Uh, but it is customary in these situations with every Disc Golf Valley tournament that I've been a part of to just flip a coin if there's a tie. So I've got a quarter right here. And heads is David and tails is... Oh, wow. David really got the luck of the draw on that one. He didn't even tie them. Ah, uh, no matter. It's tails anyway. So you are Diesel or... You or Diesel, or you are Diesel, is your winner. Let's give it up for him. GG, good game. See you guys next time.